The following is a legal advertisement. This does not constitute individual legal advice and should not be construed as such. This podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. My name is Michelle Gamino, and I am the Client Resource and Business Development Coordinator for Gwendolyn J. Stirk and the Family Law Group. Our speakers today are family law attorneys, Gwendolyn Stirk and Jennifer Nolan. Today's topic is enforcing a court order. Hi, everybody. My name is Gwendolyn Stirk. I am an attorney here at Stirk Family Law, and I'm here with attorney Jennifer Nolan. And today we're going to talk about enforcing court orders. Right. So I think uh, the issue that has arisen has been what to do if my significant other or ex-spouse um, is not obeying the court order. Well, yeah, after all, it's just an order. It's just right. a piece of paper unless it's enforced, right? Right, and I think that's what some people think, um, that it's just a court order, that we can make up our rules as we go as long as, you know, it doesn't hurt anyone. Well, that's really a bad attitude because the bottom line is is that the orders do have teeth if you get back before a court and they're willing to enforce it. Right. So I th- think what we should talk about possibly is how we go about enforcing the court order and what happens if you don't abide by the court order. Okay, well, let's start with a hypothetical question then. So I have a support order and I'm supposed to be receiving $2,000 a month in child support and $3,000 a month in maintenance. Mm -hmm. And my ex is self-employed and I haven't received a darn cent. What do I do? (laughs) First, you need to come to Gwendolyn J. Sturgey, the family law group, get advice. And what we will advise you is is you need to start the procedures of, of filing a petition uh, for rule to show cause to find the other person in indirect uh, civil contempt of the court order. And what's it sounds that rule word sounds like you know when you're reading a pleading they're always praying for contempt or praying for <laughs> relief. What's a rule? What's that mean? Well what you're doing essentially in, in layman's terms you're telling the court that the other party has not complied with the court order and you're asking the court to find them in contempt in which the other party the burden shifts once the rule issues what burden the burden to prove that uh, there was a contempt or violation of the court order okay but what if I didn't have the money to pay so I walk into court and you go and I file this motion and I'm supposed to get this five thousand dollars a month and my spouse walks in the door and says "Uh, I don't have it can't pay it what happens next right so that's that's the kind of the burden shifting you 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 make the allegation I haven't received this five thousand dollars a month and it's up to the other party to say look I had the inability to pay I could not pay or to give the reasons as to why they did not comply with the court order well you know I needed to pay for my own housing I needed to pay for my dog I needed to pay for my business operation is that enough of an excuse to avoid following the order no you know I do understand we have we have bills we have other things to pay but you're also under an obligation in a court order so you have to make arrangements once this court order is entered you know to be able to provide the support as well as to provide for your household expenses okay but say I come in there and I say okay my spouse owes me five thousand dollars a month and they're not paying Mm -hmm. are you trying to tell me that I have to put up attorney's fees in order to file a motion Yes, you have to. Uh, this is what you'll have to do when you're filing a petition for rule. You have to uh, work out your retainer agreement with your attorney. And if indeed, in fact, the court finds that the other party is in contempt or his uh, actions were willful, um, then you could ask the court for the reimbursement of your attorney's fees. So they would not only then have to pay what they originally owed, but then possibly additional attorney's Correct. fees? Correct. Okay. Correct. Well, that might be a reason to go in, but what if the court doesn't give me my attorney's fees? Aren't I just chasing good for bad, or do you think I should still try? And that's one of the things I think you need to come in and talk to an attorney about, to see what is out there owed, um, what you can do to collect on that, and whether it's it's you know the right time to file the petition. Okay, so I have another question. So let's say that I filed my motion. The burden shift, as you say, for burden of proof to say, okay, I violated the order willfully and I'm found in contempt. But I still don't pay. What happens then? Does anything happen or are we just end the story? (laughs) No, it's not the end of the story. And unfortunately, some people think, you know, as long as I explain, I can't pay, but they show no proof. What they could possibly face is, you know, again, the attorney's fees. They could face possible uh, to be remanded into custody and face jail time. Uh, There are other... How long? That sounds like a good (laughs) idea. Put my ex in jail for not paying me, right? Right. And I think it depends uh, on the judge and the facts of the case. 
case and how much you're owed and and whether your your actions were really willful um is there a maximum amount of time that i could be in jail if i violated a court order isn't it 180 days Yes. So 180 days I could end up in jail. So, okay, so maybe I don't want to pay you. I'm really ticked off. I owe you 5000 a month, so I risk it. Somebody else can run my business while I'm in, and I sit in jail for 180 days. Okay. I get out. Mm -hmm. Nothing that can happen, right? No. What the else order still exists. You still have to. You would still have to pay. It'd still be enforceable order. Just because you you serve jail time, you, I mean, you're serving because you're violating a court order, not because you're trying to trade uh, jail time for paying your your uh, court ordered responsibility. Yeah, and you know, my experience over the years as an attorney, as a side note, is sometimes people aren't afraid or they think the judge won't do it. And then one night in jail, and all of a sudden, they didn't have a penny. They couldn't borrow it from, you know, tin buck two, but now they can come up with the money that they need to to get out of jail. Mm -hmm. Now, I have another question. Is the judge going to require that I pay everything back at a lump sum payment, or is the judge going to give me time? No, I think most most judges, what they'll do is, based on your financial circumstances, they might order you to pay, like, $1,000 up front and then thereafter set a monthly amount to pay each month um, but if you have the ability to pay all in one um, then the courts might order you to pay all in one well then the other issue is is that so you didn't pay me for a year you owe me five thousand a month between maintenance and child support that's sixty thousand dollars in a year you know i didn't want to spend money for attorney's fees to go back after it so you really got to use my money do i get any other benefit like interest or anything else occurring oh, yes. on these unpaid amounts absolutely Annual and what interest. kind of interest? Annual interest, 9%. Boy, I should do that instead of going to a local <laughs> bank. That sounds like a good deal. Maybe I should get a judgment. Yeah. So 9% interest. So that's interesting. So you have the liability then for the 9%, the potential for attorney's fees, and the potential for jail time. Is that yeah. my understanding? Yes. Okay. And what if the other spouse then says, I can't any, I'm not making the money I was at the time of the entry of the order. Aren't I at risk that they could try to modify the underlying order and reduce the maintenance and child support that gets paid? They could, but it doesn't excuse the fact that before they never had a motion on file to reduce. So they're still obligated to pay that amount that was entered before. But you are absolutely correct. I mean, if, if there's a change in circumstance to where you're not earning as much as you were at the time the order was entered, you could absolutely file a motion to modify with the court. Well, I think that this also relates, though, just so I'm clear, on other things just other than money. So if yes. you don't deliver the deed to the house or the personal property, whatever it is, is it true that you can ask for a petition for rule to show cause to hold somebody in contempt for any type of violation? Absolutely. If it's in the court order and you do not abide, if you are supposed to deliver documents, if you are supposed to sign a document and you do not do it, you are violating a court order. And what we're talking about here today is civil contempt. Is that correct? Correct. Now, if I pay it, let's just go one step further. So I got $60,000 behind, but I decide that I'm going to borrow money from my great uncle John, mm -hmm. and he's going to give me money to pay it off in a lump sum. Have I now completed what happens with the contempt at that point? I would arguably say that you can still be on the hook for attorney's fees for me having to, or for the party having to file a petition for rule to show cause for you failing to do what you're supposed to do. I think you can still seek attorney's fees because it wasn't until after the fact that you complied with the the uh, court ordered action. Now, whether you can be found in contempt, I mean, the question is whether or not you have a purge if you've already done the action that was required to you in the order. Okay, but let's just say that you get a purge. So I was found in contempt, mm -hmm. a purge was entered, and I paid it off. Am I still in trouble with the court or is it then over and done? Well, you have satisfied your contempt, um, but you'll still still be on the hook for attorney's fees um, okay. and you still have to abide by the court order going forward very good well i think the lesson in all of this is watch out if you get a court order make sure you're following it and if you don't have the ability to follow it you should talk to somebody about trying to modify it mm -hmm. and if you're the person who has the court order and somebody else isn't following it then you should contact our office and talk about what your remedies might be Correct. We offer free consultations and there are other matters. There's new child support laws in 2017 and things to be addressed, but we look forward to hearing from you and we give free consultations here at Stirk Family Law. The proceeding was a legal advertisement from Gwendolyn J. Stirk and the Family Law Group.